Hello everyone, let's take a look at some histology, taking a look at tissues in this chapter uh, for anatomy class. And so we're going to break this down into different parts. And the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at with tissues or histology are the epithelials. Now remember that epithelials, epi means outer. Okay, so this is going to be the outer liners. And that's what how you know, one of the reasons you know you're looking at epithelial tissue is you're always going to see it lining some kind of opening. And we have two liners within the human body. We have the visceral liner and we have the parietal liner. Visceral liner is the liner that sits on the organs themselves. Parietal liner is on the outside, so they slide past one another quite easily. So another thing that we're going to be seeing about epithelium, not only is it lining and opening, but you're going to see that the cells are tightly packed. There's no fibers or anything. Um, very tightly packed cells in there. Um, no vascular tissue whatsoever, no fibers, and uh, no space, what we'll call matrix. And you'll learn that later on when we talk about the uh, connective tissues. So let's take a look at the epithelium. And we're going to be taking a look at essentially eight different types. And one of the first things when we see these big scary terms like simple squamous epithelium, we're going to break down uh, the terminology, the verbiage of anatomy itself. Simple refers to how many cell layers. And so here we're seeing just one single cell layer. Okay. It's only one cell layer thick. So it's very, very thin, about half the thickness of a piece of paper. In fact, squamous refers to a type of cell that would just be a box shape. And so that's what we're seeing here. Here's my opening. And so no, it's epithelials. It is one cell layer thick. And I see that it's a, a flattened horizontal um, rectangle, if you will, of, of a cell. And so that's going to be a squamous layer. Now, since it's so thin, it's not going to be protecting you. What it's there for is absorption. And so what we would find uh, for an example of where we'd find simple squamous epithelium would be lining the air sacs of the lungs, Okay, what we call alveoli. And so the air sacs of the lungs is responsible for all this gas exchange back and forth. And so that's a location for the simple squamous epithelium. The next type we'd find, if you follow the, the terminology with the simple, means one cell layer thick. It's epithelium, so I see these openings. And now I see, instead of these flattened stacks, these rectangles, I see little cubes. And so if you look in, they're just little squares, little cube-like things that are found all scattered throughout. Where we're looking inside is in, in the kidney itself. There are little tubules of the kidney. So the kidney itself is extracting all the urine out. And so the urine is actually going into these little tubules, and they're going out um, into the bigger collection system. So simple cupoidal just refers to um, the shape of those and where we would find them is found in the kidney tubules. Okay, now here we're seeing a really close up view. Um, here's my opening right here. And so now I see one single cell layer thick. It's going straight up and down and they're in form in little columns as you go. So this is what we would refer to as a simple columnar epithelium. Now, what we'll see is also uh, these cells right here that are in the process of excreting into the opening. And so what they're, I said excreting, I should have said secreting into the opening that's called mucus, okay? So the cells making the mucus, that wonderful slippery substance that allows things to move through this opening, those cells themselves making the mucus are referred to as goblet cells because it looks like a wine glass or a goblet, okay? So these are the things that tell me I'm looking for a simple or looking at a simple columnar epithelial tissue. Um, where this is going to be lining is kind of the digestive tract, like your esophagus, uh, small intestine, and so on. So it's going to be a little bit of protection here but it's making the mucus to help slide things through and, and, and allowing for that opening uh, to move things through. Now, if I look even closer here, this isn't the best of all pictures. It, just ignore the little cilia. Cilia are little hair-like things that move things through. But what I'm looking for is here's a cell and it's kind of kind of weird shaped. It's straight up and down, kind of like columnar, but it is kind of wide at the top and uh, really narrow at the bottom. Or maybe there's a couple cells down here um, separating the outer layer from the inner layer. So this is what we refer to as pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Now columnar, it is columnar in nature. It's straight up and down, but it's pseudo stratified. Pseudo meaning false, stratified meaning layered. So here we see that there are some areas, I don't know if you can see that line as well as I can, but I see that there's a uh, one cell here, but here's the, actually a couple of cells. Okay, this one is kind of wavy. It kind of goes this way as I outline it. It's going straight up and down, but it does have these little wigger, wiggles to it, um, kind of narrow at the top, wide at the bottom. Some of them will go all the way down to the basement membrane, and some of them don't. So that's what we would call pseudo stratified. Now, where we would find these, rather than lining the esophagus for food, we're looking at 
uh, something that lines your respiratory system, like your trachea, your windpipe. And I see that we do have goblet cells, so we do have to have mucus there as well. So just some examples of where we find them, how you know the difference is the big goal for this. Um, and then we move on to this uh, tissues that are layered. Okay, here we're looking at the entire layer. Ignore all these. These are little baby cells. They're going to be uh, growing up and maturing. But we're looking at these layers out here. These are definitely layers, so we call, refer to them as stratified. Now, again, we see the term squamous. That means that there's going to be um, kind of flattened stacks. They're going to be more rectangular in nature. And it is uh, some uh, stratified squamous epithelium. Now, this uh, layer actually has a dark outer layer called keratin with a K, K-E-R-A-T-I-N. That's a waterproofing layer. So in seeing that darkened layer, then I know we're looking at the skin. So I have keratinized stratified squamous here. That lines the skin and certainly it's going to be thicker in those areas where we need to resist abrasion. Okay, So on their palms of our hands, the soles of our feet, and so on. You don't have as much stratified squamous epithelium, the keratinized kind, um, in, in really uh, thin areas like right at the base of your neck, the inside of your elbow and armpit, um, elbow pit, I'll call it. Um, those areas are very sensitive in nature. They don't have as much abrasion resisting characteristics. Now we hear, see here a close up here again are the little baby cells. But if I'm looking to the outside, here I see that it is flattened stacks again. So this is stratified squamous epithelium, but I don't see that dark layer that I saw here. So it's non keratinized. That means that this tissue needs to remain moist. And so we're looking on the insides of the cheek, maybe the walls of the vagina and so on. Those are areas that the cells are just going to slough off to protect versus being waterproofed. Okay, this would be non keratinized stratified squamous. Now we see stratified cuboidal again little cubes and they're lining all these different glands it might be salivary glands or sweat glands but this is actually looking at within the human ovary we see it's lining the even the egg cell itself for protection a stratified cuboidal epithelium okay here's the opening what we see here is all the different layers in there of the cubes and they're protecting that gland itself stratified cuboidal epithelium now, we also see in a rare cases, this isn't the best of pictures because it looks like simple squamous here or simple columnar here, but I do see a couple areas where there's two cell layers thick. So it's not the best of pictures. Here's probably a better one of stratified columnar epithelium. Now, I said it's kind of rare because we only find it in a couple places in the body, maybe the pink little conjunctiva of the eyes or where the esophagus goes down and and joins up with the stomach in what we call the cardiac sphincter. So that's a little special layer of tissue, um, a little bit more resistance in there. Um, that's where we would find two examples where we'd find stratified columnar. It is still straight up and down. I see two cells stacked on top of one another. Remember when we saw pseudo stratified, they're all different shapes and kind of really uh, large at the top and, and narrow at the base or whatever. Here we're seeing that they are two straight up and down rectangles just stacked on top of one another. Stratified columnar epithelium. Now, the last one that we'll have with the with the visuals of this is what we refer to as transitional or stratified transitional. It looks a little cuboidal up here, but down here it's going to be uh, more flattened stacks. It looks more squamous. And the reason for that is this is lining a kind of a stretchy organ, like the urinary bladder. You think about it as it fills up, it's going to be stretched out more and more. And so it looks more down. Uh, this area looks more squamous. When it's relaxed, it's going to be a little bit more uh, cuboidal in shape. Now, here's the, how you tell the difference. Look for the varying thicknesses. When we saw the cuboidals, they were the same thickness all the way throughout. You find your opening, you saw the same differences. But here, we see that it has peaks and valleys in transitional. This is all be, also be lining things like the umbilical cord and so on. So you look for the varying thicknesses that tells us it's there. And incidentally, this is how the brain knows that the urinary bladder is getting full for that sensation of having to pee is because there's actually little sensors uh, dictating how, how stretched this organ is. So you have a little feedback mechanism that way. Now, other types of epithelial tissue, even though it sounds weird to refer to endothelium as an epithelial type of tissue, endothelia is just a little bit on the inside that's responsible for making even more mucus. It's going to be more kind of deeper layers of the skin. It's still lining the opening, but it's skin layers. We have other um, layers called serous layers, and these are layers that are going to be providing more moisture versus mucus. Um, so, you know, kind of the lung cavities and so on. 
And as I mentioned at the beginning of all this, you have two different layers. You have an outer layer and you have an inner layer for the endothelials in any liner in our bodies. The parietal liner is the outer liner and the visceral liner is the liner that sits right on the organs. And so, like I said, this provides uh, a little bit of uh, protection against abrasion, allows things to slide past one another with very little friction and, and very little damage. Those are endothelial tissues. Now, we take a look at the last uh, type of epithelial tissues, um, which is glandular in nature. There are those that are endocrine in nature, making more hormones. They go into the entire bloodstream and they, they make their way to the entire body. So these are types of tissues that will affect the entire body. And then there's other ones that are referred to as exocrine. They're gonna be making their products but they'll move it out of the tissue into a very specific duct that goes into a target organ. And we refer to those as exocrine glands, okay? Those types fall into three categories, apocrine, which is the ones that are going to just fill up and overflow. And as they overflow, they'll bring cell fragments with them. So an example of that would be mammary glands with, uh, with lactations and so on. So there's the hormones that go in there. There's also going to be antibodies and nutrients and everything that go with their products. Another type of exocrine gland is going to be the holocrine gland. Holocrine gland, gland is going to be the one that fills up and ruptures. Very violent. Uh, think about, um, you know, kind of the holo nature is one that's going to be more violent and, and explosive in nature. And so like an acne gland, um, what are technically called sebaceous oil glands, types of oil glands, they're going to fill up and rupture or pop. And so like acne is a good enough example for that. The last type is going to be maracrine in nature. Now, maracrine means that it actually requires energy uh, to move that substance out of it. So this is going to be, um, for example, like a sweat gland or a salivary gland, something that actually requires energy to move those products out of the cell. So exocytosis means it makes a little bag around it, a little vesicle around whatever the substance is and it moves that substance to the cell membrane opens up the membrane pushes the contents to the outside and closes the membrane again that process uses energy and so who knew the process of sweating itself is actually its own workout it burns energy same thing with saliva the fact that you're thinking about that food and drooling i don't know if i call it a workout but it is requiring some energy to go with there so think about some different examples for this section on the test you don't identify it visibly because those cells aren't actually physically doing them, but we're going to be describing those a little bit and then giving examples. So come up with the three different types of exocrine glands. Think about how they move their substances and some examples of where we would find them. Okay, so that it concludes the beginning portions when we're taking a look at just the exocrine glands in general, and then we'll be moving on into the next phase, which is going to be the, uh, the endocrine glands and so on.